The first series I'd like to tackle is Metroid. I'm a huge Metroid fan, so I admittedly have some bias here, but I think that Metroid is a pretty poorly represented series in Smash Bros. Samus and Zero Suit Samus and Brawl, who is the same character, are the only representatives the series has, and Metroid's a pretty popular series, at least in the West, and I think that's the main reason we haven't seen a lot of Metroid representation. I mean, I think you can point to Sakurai maybe just not getting it if you look at what we had in Brawl. There was Zero Suit Samus, who used a fighting style that no one has ever seen before, and then there were the levels, the Parasite Queen, which isn't iconic at all, and I mean, it's Metroid, if you're gonna go with a giant boss enemy and a tank in a background, you don't do Mother Brain, like, I don't really know what the thought process there is. And I mean, the only real saving grace is that Samus was awesome. However, Zero Suit Samus? That's a bit more debatable. Zero Suit Samus is not important to Metroid as a series, because she's Samus. Samus is already in the game in her badass armored form. Zero Suit Samus has only ever fought in a single game in the series, Metroid Zero Mission, and that's a stealth segment where the goal is to avoid combat. There's no precedent for Samus fighting without her suit, and there's no precedent for Samus losing her suit in the middle of combat. It's also a very strange and annoying part of Brawl that you have to transform into Zero Suit Samus after your final smash. Now, I'm not getting rid of Zero Suit Samus' moveset. That's actually a pretty good moveset. Uh, just stay tuned to later videos, and you'll see where I'm putting that. Okay, so with Samus out of the way, getting into what possible new characters we could have from Metroid in the next Smash game. The first of these characters is Ridley. There's been a ton of argument, both for and against Ridley being in Smash. Obviously, the precedent is there for him to be included in the game. He's appeared in almost every single Metroid game to date, and he's got a personal connection to the backstory of Samus. Metroid doesn't exactly have a ton of dialogue, but Ridley's the closest thing Samus has to a nemesis. The classic criticism of Ridley is that he's too big, but that's a pretty awful complaint. Ridley's got enough variance in design to change him up a bit while still keeping the factors that make him recognizable as an evil space dragon. For playstyle, I'd imagine Ridley as a bit of a glass cannon. Powerful and fast, but severely lacking in defense. Akuma is a great example of this kind of playstyle. A lot of different moves to cover just about any situation, but very low health and durability compared to other fighters. Going beyond this, finding good characters for Smash becomes a little more tricky for a couple of reasons. The best third option would be Dark Samus. Dark Samus was the main antagonist throughout three games, and the concept of an evil Samus was explored with the SAX in Fusion. There is certainly enough of a precedent for her to be in the game. As both a villain and a female character, she'd be a great option to help diversify the roster a bit. The problem here is that Dark Samus probably isn't going to be showing up in a Metroid game anytime soon. Her story is pretty much over, and it's unlikely we'll see her again. Now, Dark Samus initially kind of appears to be a Samus clone. She's got the same body type, but Dark Samus has a wildly divergent move pool compared to Samus. Sure, there's an arm cannon, but that's about the only similarity. The first thing that's cool about Dark Samus is she hovers, so you get your Mewtwo-like ability of having no traction on the ground and floating around and being all fast. On top of that, Dark Samus has a ton of move options from the fights in the games. I mean, if you tally up the fights with Dark Samus, or things that become Dark Samus or are tied to Dark Samus in some way, you've got uh, four fights in Metroid Prime 2, the uh, ending two fights in Metroid Prime, and a few fights in Metroid Prime 3, so there was a ton of inspiration there. And, I mean, I think you can craft a good moveset from the second fight with her in Metroid Prime Echoes alone. Okay, so beyond these couple of people, we have not a whole lot of other better options. Starting with the latest game in the series and working back, the first real major supporting character we get is Adam. Adam has two problems. The first problem is that Adam sucks and no one really likes Adam all that much. The second problem is, Adam never really fights, and he kind of looks stupid. So, I think that pretty much cancels out his chances. Going back further than that, the last sort of major supporting characters we get are the Bounty Hunters from Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Again, none of them ever showing up again. None of them were more important than anybody else. Not gonna show up. Beyond those, we have the Hunters from Metroid Prime Hunters, and they pretty much have the exact same problem. None of them are really more important than any of the other ones, they had some cool movesets, and their game wasn't really liked all that much, so we're probably never going to see him again. The only Hunter that really kind of had any more significance than the other ones was Silux, and that was only because the little secret ending of Metroid Prime 3. I don't ever really think we're going to get an answer to the Silux easter egg unless Retro takes control of Metroid again, and that's kind of unlikely, at least for the near future. 
Now, the last option for doing more characters would be to do a variation on Samus. There's no real denying that Samus has about a billion different suits and a billion different abilities, and they could all sort of be mix and match to probably make a pretty cool moveset. That said, none of them really stand out, and most of them are only significant to their own games. A lot of these suits are just recolors, so you can get away pretty easily with just having different costumes for Samus that are those different suit colors. However, having different costumes for the dark suit, or the light suit, or the PED suit, or any of the other like cool side suits that we've seen in the series, that'd be pretty cool. But I don't really think you need an extra character to do that. So now down to what I actually think we're going to see in the next Smash Bros. Realistically, I think we are going to see Samus, and that's it. I really, really want Ridley, and I think he'd work, but I just don't think Metroid is popular enough in Japan for him to actually be cared about. I think that's true, especially in light of how they'd have to design him to work in the game. You could design him to work pretty easily, but you have to make more exceptions for him than you would for other characters. And it's not so much that Ridley is really hard to fit in the game, but that other characters are a lot easier to fit in the game. So, most likely for Metroid, all we're getting is Samus. That's pretty much it for Metroid. There are a couple of other points I want to hit on for the series, but these are going to be revealed in later videos. Thanks for watching, and comment to let me know what you think of the choices I made here, and toss out some of your own.